top of the list here we have john moore and morrison our co-host and of course john has his own show uh the liberty man the liberty man.com is a website his show is from seven to nine a.m central standard time on republic radio and morrison our scientist dealing with uh, earth changes volcanism uh sinkholes uh, ultraviolet light changes to the upper atmosphere so many topics uh and the uh and then, of course, we have our uh, Alexander Bachman, an amazing author, and is right in so many areas dealing with spirituality, earth changes, the drug war in Mexico. And then popping on for a few minutes, we're going to have Bob, Dr. Bob Teal later on in this hour, uh, which who we had on yesterday talking about his book, 2012 and the Rise of the Secret Sect. Uh, John, you're a special forces agent. You're actually a, one of the primary consultants I refer people to. I said, if you need to get prepared, you need to contact John Moore. He'll tell you what equipment, what things to get listed. We have that 10 plus 10 plus 10 list that I posted up on, on our preparedness listing, and I need to update it again. One of the things we just added today was we had uh, Bob Allerton of Turtle Tough Shelters. They're one of our new sponsors. And I tell people, food, water, and shelter. Food, prepare-wise prepare food, or ready food uh, is the best foods you can get. Next thing is you need to get a shelter, Turtle Tough Shelters, water BEV 200 system, which is better than distilled or any other water system with a 12-volt pump. Beyond that, Absolutely. you need to follow John. And, uh, and he'll literally get wealthy enough people, literally requisition the equipment for, and fill a container and send it off to the Cook Islands. And somebody says, I'm going there. And they've got their yacht, and they're, gonna, they're just cutting off society and saying, it's not end of the world day like today. <laughs> But these idiot Mayans, you know. And I even had some character email me, you said that Nibiru was coming by on December 21st, Steagle, and it's all a scam. I'm thinking, he doesn't listen to the show. In fact, no, we've said don't. repeatedly, we re- said repeatedly, now listen out there, if you are listening today and you didn't listen any other day, we're telling you real disasters can happen and are very likely to happen like the Carrington event. Real disasters like Sendai is already happening and continuing to be an increasing disaster. We haven't even seen the worst of Sendai Japan and, and Fukushima. We have real disasters like the fiscal cliff, which, by the way, I just mentioned before the break, I think the best thing we could do is buy those uh, flying um, squirrel suits, I call them, uh, from that company in Florida and send them to all our senators and congressmen that are afraid of going over the fiscal cliff, our Republicans, because all the Democrats, which we should rename the Progressive Communist Party, uh, they'll fall and our Republicans will just glide like squirrels. Uh, that would be a, well, Dr. That would be Dr. a Bill, good solution. I, I, I got limited time. i got to get back to a meeting here. Yeah, I, I want you to, to tell us what, what's happening. Yeah. Well, I think it's incredibly important. It's mentioned on Drudge, but not, it's not headlines. The People's Republic of China, the Communist Chinese, are encouraging and supporting President Obama to take our guns. I believe that's incredibly Red flag. significant. Red flag. I mean, no pun intended. Uh, yeah. But, but uh, if there's pun any intended, enemy we actually. Have on the, if there's any true valid enemy we have, it's the Communist Chinese. Yeah. They do, in fact, they do, in fact, want us disarmed. Uh, I believe the real agenda is they're looking for the pushback from uh, men who absolutely will not register guns. Registration is first, confiscation later, and they will not register their guns. And there will be either a spontaneous violent pushback or a created and contrived one if they can't get one spontaneously. That's where this is going, and it's going to happen in the next 60 to 90 days. It's not going to take very long. Once they get that, once they get their violent pushback, that will give them the pretext to do whatever else they want, including a limited martial law possibly in some of these cities and yeah. other so, draconian measures, possibly even invo- involving foreign troops if the pushback is violent enough. Well, here's my advice. Uh, the, my advice is, and it's real simple, step one, two, three. Well, number one is ignore Obama and his uh, illegal de- declarations of uh, executive orders. Number two, take all your guns and make sure they're they're hidden in places like PVC pump and pipe in your yard or in other remote places uh, and make sure they're sealed off so nobody can find out where your guns and ammo are. And number three, uh, do not do anything violent because that's what this idiot government wants to do. They want you to be stupid, just like there are a bunch of people pushing so that a lot of people will try to jump on the latest comet whipping past the earth or commit mass suicide like the Heaven's Gate people. Uh, we have Obama 
sticking a stick into a snake pit. He wants to really aggravate the population so the fringe elements will react and do something stupid and violent, and then they can justify, oh, we better deploy those 30,000 30, exactly predator what drones. For. We, we better if bring in those. If they, if, they, if they don't get it spontaneously from uh, people in the gun culture, they'll create it. Just like they oh, yeah, they'll, they'll have somebody that pretends that. that they're a prepper or pretends they're, you know, just like in nine, in back in uh, the uh, Oklahoma City or even Ruby Ridge, they'll say, it's those damn preppers and those gun-toting militia. They're the ones that caused all this. They even tried to say that this lady whose son committed this murder out in uh, Newton, Connecticut, was a prepper. It's like, you you can see the agenda. You don't have to be a genius here. You have to just say the very best thing is, number one, ignore Obama, prepare your stuff, and don't register. Lie, lie, lie. And if the officials come by, say, I don't have guns. Of course you don't have guns. I know I talked to one of my veteran friends back in Georgia when I worked in 87, 88 in Georgia, and I worked at the Augusta Regional Trauma Center in emergency as well, and burn unit, regional burn unit in South Georgia. The biggest one outside of uh, Emory University in Atlanta. And this vet came. I was in the parking lot outside our clinic in Augusta, Georgia. It was funny in 87. And I said, what's hanging from your windshield? He says, those are nades. I said, hey, do you forgot the first part? Is that grah? He said, got pins in them. I said, oh, dang. I said, what if they hit the, what if, what if they hit the windshield? They said, nah, no problem. You got the pins in them. I said, that looks like an M- like, that looks like an M16 with a 45 round clip in it. I said, he says, yep, but safety's on. <laughs> and this is on his, it was the back of his cab of his truck, right? And I said, I said, now if someone tried to take your gun, he said, well, if someone tried to take my gun, it would be like trying to take out a bone saw and chopping off my right leg. That's the way I'd react. There now, I can tell you, Bill, there ain't I no guns going to be taken from any vets. Show. This is, yeah, yeah, and I know you can there speak to that. So, John, of thousands of men with the same attitude, I assure you. Right. Tens now, I don't want anybody to go ramble, but I want people to realize, be devious, lie, hide, stick your stuff away. Gun sales, now, you can't even buy guns. If you want to buy a Bushmaster, buy this or that, you call them and say, now, what year did you want you're to pick that up? You're about a week too late. Yeah, you're a week too late. Too late. You're a week <laughs> after what we call the Grinch of Obama. This is the Grinch who stole all your guns. Now, when the Communist Chinese endorse Obama by executive order trying to take away your guns, you don't need to scratch your head and say, that's just a conspiracy theory, John Moore exactly. or Deagle. Right. You need well, to say, mainstream holy crap. Right. Just nothing I made up. Right. Yeah, it doesn't make this up. This is like a, I call the, the anal retraction wink sign like, we're about to get screwed. If people are stupid enough to bring their guns in when we have a kid who is hopped up on dangerous toxic drugs, which, by the way, in the medical profession, make me nauseated. 21% of our people that are American citizens, as they enter the Christmas holidays, the season of joy and Jesus' sacrifice and birth, which didn't get his birthday right, but we can at least talk about Jesus. And, of course, they're trying to excise Jesus by cautery out of Christmas, which is ridiculous. But 21% of the American population are on these kill you jack drugs. It's not surprising. Every single one of these multi-murder maniacs, they're on these drugs. That, and the medical that's profession... The only, that's, that's, the, that's the only thing that connects all these is the psychotropic mm-hmm. drugs, nothing else. Now, I wanna, I'm going to say a very important statement here. The solution is not, well, number one, registration. It's personal responsibility to make sure your guns are properly stored. And it's number two, training, which everybody should have on their guns so they know what to do. I personally believe, this is my belief system, that I should be able to have any gun I want, including 50 caliber anti-aircraft machine gun or directed energy weapon or anything, as long as I'm rational. I don't want an overlord to say, we're going to put you on a database or we're going to presume you're crazy because you talk about this or that on your show. I don't want any, they can put you on any kind of damn database, or let's say you come back and you have an anxiety attack because you're returning from the Gulf after three tours, or you had a period of, uh, quote, a temporary breakdown. We have returning vets that come back, and now they're trying to declare they're mentally ill, so they can't get near a gun of any kind, even a pop gun or twenty two, because they had a rough time and developed right. PTSD. That's, That's right. sickening. And, of course, we, we know that there's no respect for our veterans. Our veterans are totally pissed at this idiot Obama. Don't go Rambo. Hide your guns. No, I, lie, I, I lie, agree, lie. Absolutely. Ignore idiot Obama and his troop of communists. And don't and realize that when communist China endorses taking your guns. They are just drooling. Say, oh boy, now they we are. can go. Doctor Bill, I need I need to screw here. You guys have a great show. Merry Christmas, John. Thank you for your amazing support in your show again. The Liberty Man, seven to nine, Monday to Friday. 
Welcome back. I want to repeat that statement of John Moore again, the LibertyMan.com. Uh, Ann's website is Homeland-Defense-Number4U.com, and Alexander Bachman is joining us. Alexander Bachman, you're a, um, uh, a Mexican national of Swedish origin. You speak Mexican and uh, English. You have done amazing journalism and research on the spiritual issues, geopolitical, the drug cartels, uh, probably one of the broadest uh, uh, spectrums of backgrounds and knowledge on the spiritual as well as the geopolitical and other levels of almost any guest we have. Uh, and we're going to have popping in the show for just a few minutes Bob Teal, Dr. Bob Teal, who's a naturopathic doctor, member of the, the Church of God, and also a researcher, wrote his book called 2012 and the Rise of the Secret Sect, which he's giving free. If people call that number, 800-675-2012, they'll get free shipping and a free book. They don't have to go to Amazon, spend 20 bucks, and pay delivery. They get it free. And I want to hear what your analysis of the end of 2012 is, because we've seen a lot of earth changes, we have a lot of crazy things going on, and then we're going to hear from Alexander Bachman as we head into the Christmas season. Uh, there was a ceremony today, you mentioned Alexander, and we're going to hear from you in a minute, about the appointment of John Kerry, who's a skull and bonesman, and we want to hear some of the, how can I say, more titillating, na- nauseating facts about this man. Uh, so we realize that uh, Satan and his minions are firmly ensconced in control of every government on earth, and that's why when people say, oh, gee, you can't vote for him, he's a high-level Mason. There is no politician in any country who is not in one form or another, in one religion or another, a minion of Satan himself. So anybody who, who believes otherwise is delusional. Uh, and I want to hear from you first and tell us about the earth changes, space, weather, and the other things, and you got some new news. What's happening? Okay, well, what, uh, what's going on right now, just... I mean, oh, no, I mean, just a second now. we got Dr. Bob Teal here. Hi, Bob. Yes. Yeah, hi. I, I want, hi. Just before we get going with you, Bob, because I know you got a lot of really interesting things, I just want to hear from Ann. Do you, do you have any new news, Ann, before we get ready to talk to Dr. Bob and uh, Alexander Bachman? Yeah, we have uh, we have crossed into, uh, we're, we're past the point of the uh, <coughs> winter solstice. So uh, all those people with solar panels need to start thinking about February 1st because they'll need to re- reset the angle on their uh, solar panels. But we have not crossed the boundary of the perihelion, which will occur the uh, second week in January. The perihelion is where the, the Earth is closest to the sun. And you might not think that would matter, but it does. I was listening to w, uh, KWGN in uh, Denver, and the um, weather person on there was saying that uh, you can't go out without sunburn protection. Now, now this, that probably sounds a little strange. It sounds a little strange to me. But you have to remember that they're a mile high, and so the air is a lot thinner. Yeah, so, but, it, but also there's two bands of radiation. Stan Dale mentioned this, uh, and also I got corroboration by Professor McCanny. Since 1992, UV bands, they've been dramatically increasing, and now the, the, the ozone layer is thinner. If you had a major CME that strobes ultraviolet light, uh, solar uh, background radiation, and x-rays that come from the sun, we could get fried in midday. In other words, there's going to come a day, and I can't tell you what day it'll be, whether it's years or months away, but it's, we're going to have a day when the magnetic field of the Earth will be weak enough, and there'll be a strobing of the Earth with ultraviolet light that it will destroy our grassy plants and crops just like it says in the Bible. That day is coming. Well, actually, I was watching my plants this last summer because the UV was uh, so strange. And what's happening is that the UV is because the uh, ozone hole, you know, we have an ozone hole now in the Arctic. The stratosphere is so thin that the UV is not being, uh, the the deep UV is not being used up to create ozone. And that's why the ozone layer is thinning. And uh, they said that what you'll see is that you'll see the leaves on your trees and bushes turn black. And well, the part of that is also ground level ozone is increasing because when the ultraviolet light, which higher energy isn't blocked in the higher atmosphere, it gets to ground and it generates ground level ozone on top of the UV damage that occurs. Well, that's right. Anyway, this, this weather person in Denver, she said, and that is because you have to you have to think about sunscreen because we're almost at the closest point of the Earth to the sun. So she, so they're starting. Uh, you know, they're starting to use that as an excuse for the fact that the UV is getting through the atmosphere. 
Yeah, exactly. Uh, amazing. Okay, we have a quick. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Bob. You have some interesting comments, and I can just tell you're chomping at the bit because you mentioned when I talked to you after yesterday's show, an hour one Thursday, that you have some important comments to mention as we segue into Alexander Bachman and his comments about the new Secretary of State nominee, uh, who's a skull and bonesman. So, Dr. Bob, uh, you have. I'm sure you have new things because you're a. Uh, how can I say it? You're a hound for sniffing out news that fits in the biblical matrix, uh, they, and that's why you've done such great work in your books. Well, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Bill. Anyway, what I thought I would share today is we still have uh, about 48 minutes before uh, the, the Mayan calendar actually ends. So it hasn't actually quite ended yet. But there are at least two or three predictions that some attach to it that have not been proven to be true so far today. Right. And I'll just briefly go through those. Well, um, there's a group of uh, Chinese. They actually, the Chinese government partially detained or arrested between 500 and 1,000 of them a couple of days ago. And these people believe, actually, that Jesus Christ returned as a woman, believe it or not, and that uh, today the sun was supposed to rise in the west. And when I got up this morning, I checked, and it rose in the east, or, you know, it looks like it rises, of course. Uh -huh. And so that uh, didn't happen. And the other is that uh, there were supposed to be massive power outages in China. And so everybody went and bought candles because they're supposed to have three days of darkness. And that's not happened yet. I also checked the earthquake uh, reports uh, from the government on this. And so far today, the biggest one, there were two five O's over in uh, Japan, but again, nothing out of the ordinary. And when you and I were uh, talking about 2012, this date a few days ago, you know, we both said, look, there might be some storm today. There might be some earthquakes. Uh, where, where I am in California right now is very sunny. It doesn't look like uh, we're about to experience the Mayan flood that uh, the Shilam Balim uh, warned of. Of course, it didn't necessarily tell you what day it was going to be, and I guess it's supposed to rain tomorrow, but, I, but you know, living in California, as you and I both do, you know, it does rain here in December. <laughs> it's actually really good, and usually rains very short times, and usually in the evening. I mean, it's like when you get it, it's like, oh, my gosh, isn't this wonderful? we got rain. I mean, most other people are saying, oh, man, it's raining. And we say, and we're in California, say, this is a novelty. Man, it's raining. This is great. Right. So we can, we can, we can use the rain, and, of course, uh, it helps clear out the air as well. So yeah, exactly. So as, as, as far as 2012 goes, because it's kind of like my final update on the 2012 on your show, because, yeah. you know, next time I'm on your show, this will all be over with. Right, well, we, we'll be dealing with real issues, and uh, I'm sure you've got some interesting books coming down the road, Pike. We won't talk about what they are, but... Uh, I do. Pro prophetic revelation is still unwinding, and what people need to use is they need to use their intellect, which you do very well, and they need to use the Bible as their standard, not the false prophecies of Mayans, Hopi, Nostradamus used divination techniques to fight uh, from the ancient book of mysteries that the Chaldeans used in the high priests of Egypt against Moses. They need to use their own spiritual connection, their conscience, and their prayer life after they've used their intellect to actually study the Bible and just general facts that are historically known. That's why we have experts like yourself, Dr. Bob, and experts like uh, Jonathan Gray, who's been on the program as an astronomical and a historical and archaeological expert. Um, well, I won't take too much more time, but there's just two or three points I wanted to mention and t turn it back over to your other guests. Yeah, if you can and stay around, though, because gonna, we're going to open things up, because we want to also have, by the way, open lines today if people want to ask questions on any particular topic, because, okay. you know, it is the end of the world. Ha -ha. Well, and, and, of course, because it's not the end of the world, this is yeah. one of the things this, this all this mind stuff is about, and that's that people are going to scoff at those of us who believe in biblical prophecies. You right. mentioned earlier, in an earlier segment, the toll-free number for our book, and as I said, your listeners can go to Amazon and pay $20, and that's great. Or if they want it free, it's nearly 400 pages. All I have to do is call 800-675-2012. Welcome back, and a um, very important statement you made on the break. I want you to repeat it, uh, Dr. Bob Teal, and you had a follow-up uh, to that, Alexander Bachman. Dr. Bob, uh, let's roll. Uh, what you really said is extremely prescient. This is very important to understand this because they're not just interested in trying to get rid of the, quote, the conspiracy theorists and the idiots who believed in the Mayan uh, end of the world. Their real goal is to destroy religion and the belief that one-third of the Bible is prophecy, so if you're a Mayan nut, you'll believe in that Bible, won't you? 
you. And so that's the real issue. They don't want us to think. They don't want us to respond. They don't want us to even look for things like the mark of the beast or a judgment by fire or the rise of a beast empire. They don't want us to see any of it while it's happening right before our eyes. Dr. Bob, expand on that because I think you have a very good statement on that. All right, well, while I was on the air with you this time, a news item just popped up, and that's what we were talking about. It says, quote, the uh, four-minute video from the NASA labels December 21st Mayan apocalypse as a hoax and explains how the rumor began. Okay, now we all know the world's not going to end today, and that's fine. And I've been saying that for years, and I've been saying it on your show for years, and plus in my book. But the problem with this is that the, uh, the Mayan... I, the idea about a Mayan apocalypse is not a, was not a hoax that somebody just invented and spread rumors. There was a researcher in 1906 who looked at the, the Mayan Dresden Codex, last page, said this is predicting the apocalypse. And again, we who believe in the Bible know that that's not accurate, but for the media to say that this all was just a hoax is really an attempt to scoff at all prophecy. And that's the deal. It's the, the secularists keep coming out and saying, the Mayans never predicted it. And there's some non-secularists, but mostly it's the secular, secularists who don't believe in the Bible or don't believe in God who are saying, well, you know, this is just a hoax, and the Mayans really didn't predict the end of the world. The Mayans absolutely predicted the end of the world. Now, we can argue for sure if it meant today or not, but I've got writings from the Mayans that said that the world is going to end. Okay, so they did predict the end of the world. Not all the Mayans, probably, perhaps not the ones in the 5th century, but some of the later ones did. And so that's what 2012 was really about. It's part of, in my view, a satanic plan to get people to scoff against prophecy. So when the Great Tribulation is about to begin, and God's prophets start to rub up and say, hey, this is the deal, people are going to say, oh, come on. Nothing happened yeah. to white. You're one of those people. Wrong. And you're, yeah. you know, the Mayan prophecy uh, nuts. I, I, and, yeah, I had some idiot email me uh, just the other day to say, Deagle, who do you think you are? You predicted that Nibiru was going to come by on December 21st. And I said, nothing of the sort. Yeah, we yeah, they were, obviously we weren't listening at all. In fact, I said the exact opposite. What right, I said I is, we have a danger of coronal mass ejections from solar storms with or without an asteroid, comet, or a nearest object. We do have the approach of uh, objects that cause cataclysmic events every 3,612 years, which is coming in the, in the near future. I don't know when. We do have the danger of, of the magnetic reversal, which at a current rate could take up to 1,100 years, but it's speeding up, so it could be a much sooner. We have a giant ozone hole that's appearing over the Arctic and Antarctic, and a magnetic hole that's 3 million square miles that's luckily not a ground level over the South Atlantic. These are not conspiracy theories. In fact, what the government's done is not only shutting down and they have these disinformation ops officers in the media to try to, to crush alternative media, because we're the real media. CNN and, you know, Fox News Network, etc. They're the <laughs> false news networks. They are full of it. And what we do is ask tough questions. Our li- and knowledge is limited, but a lot less limited than you think because we have officers inside government departments, Homeland Security, the Pentagon, and others, and coming in under pseudonyms and sources, and some of them are supernatural, that provide us information that we can corroborate that gives us a much bigger picture than the government and the global controlling Satanists want us to have. And when we ask even just better questions, what we get is, and I just looked at that today, there's, this, there's a big page here of things about... Uh, about asteroids and it says how to defend Earth from asteroids. Asteroids give us and asteroids take away. Target Earth. I mean, this is a whole page just of Google News today, just on asteroids. And the reason is, and they even show up on the NASA sites, all these asteroids. Oh, don't be worried about it. And they show these pictures of asteroids that we had one two weeks ago that whipped past the Earth at a hair's breadth distance away. And yet they want us to just ignore it. No, just go back to sleep. Now, don't bother yourself. Don't worry about it. If an asteroid strikes and it causes a destruction of the ozone layer, it destroys Luxembourg, no problem. Just go back to sleep, little little sheep. Eventually we'll shear you and then we'll cook you in a spit. I mean, it's sickening. And I'm totally fed up with dealing with media. To me, we're the real media. We ask tough questions. We're not going to stop them. If we have to encrypt our things and even put them on a CD because they close down, you know, shortwave and the Internet and everything, they'll never close us down. They'll never do it. And even from the from the other side, if they, quote, <laughs> if they kill Diggle and, and other broadcasters like Alex Jones and Rents and everybody else, we, we'll speak from the grave because the Lord will resurrect us and bring us back. I mean, there's no way they're going to shut us up. 
And another thing, I mean, people have to read their Bibles a little bit to understand that all the alignments, uh, be it a star, be it a planet, or be it a galaxy, are moved by God and nobody else. I mean, just read Isaiah, read Job, well, and start and reading the, your Bible. <laughs> well, yeah, but let me just talk about some alignments that are in the approximate range right now. We're in the approximate time period of the 105,000 major ice age cycle called the Milankovitch cycle. We're in the 10,800-year uh, 10, cycle for ice ages. We're in the 360-year mini ice age modern type cycle for ice ages. We are heading into a cooling period that will last to 2066, 2670. That's a fact. You yeah, can just see it in the weather Orion across. Orion came out of the horizon, and it's a very, very important part of the right. processional uh, equinox right. for We're, those that are in the. No, I, I researched. Lore. I researched it, by the way, and found out that every 62 million years, the arm of the galaxy, which we are on, we're midway down that arm, mm -hmm. passes through the galactic plane, and we go into a different area, what's called the torsion field of the galaxy. Mm -hmm. We're literally into a different form or shape, if you want a confirmation of space-time. And as we pass through that, which, by the way, doesn't happen on a day. It takes 30 to 40 years. We've been in this transition for already about 15 to 20 years, and we'll be still in it for another 15 to 20 years. But we have, and I have this from my own classified and, and scientific articles I pulled up, a 30 times increased risk of an asteroid or comet strike. 30 times. So on an average day, you have a chance of 1 in 22,000 of a large comet. I'm talking about large. Large enough that it's not the size of a pickup truck, but it's big enough to take out, you know, half the size of a ball, baseball, of a football field or larger, of taking out a good chunk of, of a city or whatever if it strikes. Okay, remember the Earth is pretty big. That chance has increased by 30 times for the last 15 to 20 years and will continue for another 15 to 20 years. Plus the change in the torsion field, which is called the Higgs field, the gravitonic field of dark matter, that is the same field, the Higgs field, that forms wormholes. It is the structure of the basic structure of the galaxy of black holes in the center of the galaxy and white holes that emerge in every star and every planet, where matter and energy reemerge from these wormholes created from the dark center of each galaxy, which is 2.5% of the mass of every galaxy, no matter how small or how large. As we transition, the plasma physics of our sun is going to change, which means not today, the 21st, but in the next number of years, we are at dramatically higher risk of a major superstorm on the sun. The likelihood of a kill shot, even just glancing by Earth in the next, say, five or ten years, is astronomically going to go up. In, if we don't harden our grid, which three and a half, four years ago, they passed a bill with the Democratic-run Senate and Congress. It was killed by Lisa Murkowski, the rhino senator from Alaska, to not harden our grid against CMEs when Mishu Kaku and 40,000 scientists like him that belong to the organizations in America uh, that begged Congress and Senate to get back on the stick on this. If there's one thing i got to tell them, if you don't get on this right away, and we have a major CME, all you need, you don't even need a plague or a war or anything, it's just a grid to go down or satellite communications or our Internet go down, all that crash, we're going to have pandemonium. Well, People I don't worry even know. about uh, North Korea having an EMP-capable ballistic missile right now that can hit the U.S. Uh, yeah, but remember now, they, they, this is the level of the... Let me explain EMP on, on what it will affect. EMP will first affect our satellites, second affect our, our power grid because it can't stand the surge. Even a, a solar storm, just a solar storm, not even a CME, but just a big solar storm, they have to turn down the power output from our nuclear reactors or they'll burn out the transformers. Did you know that? Yes, just, absolutely. Just, just, just a solar storm. So if we have a big CME, so those will go, go right away. The last to go, believe it or not, will be your car... And maybe your home computer or equipment doesn't have electronics. And you have to have a really big blast to knock out private electronics. But your grid, it's going. You get a your satellite age. communications, they're gone. So what you're talking about, your car may turn on. You may be able to you have separate power and solar panels to run your little iPad. But you don't have any grid anymore. You don't have gas because those gas station pumps won't work. Well, it's already happening right now. Yeah, I want you to say that. Um... Dr. Bobby had a comment, and then we want to hear from Alexander Bachman. Uh, Dr. Bobby had a comment about that. Uh, that doesn't seem to work really well. So, with, with what's no. going on in the Middle East right now, you know, Russia p providing the missiles over to to Syria, uh, we may see a really messy conflict over there. And, you know, the Syrians, 
or at least the Syrian president, may decide he has no other choice but to try to use them. And I know the United States, and you know, mm. because of what we've done in Libya and stuff, we're going to be safe. Well, but, uh, this, well, you know what I'm predicting? The, I'm going to predict something totally opposite of what everybody else is saying. I'm expecting not the outbreak of war, but the outbreak of a false peace. I'm I expecting we'll the outbreak of war first. Well, whatever war, you know, whenever death and destruction, it'll be so minimal it won't precipitate nuclear war. In other words, it'll be sub-threshold. Whatever level of death and destruction, it won't be the release of bioweapons on the whole planet or a regional exchange of nuclear weapons. With the Alexander missile placed there, the NATO and the U.S. are screwed. They cannot start a conflict and be able to finish it now. The Russians don't even need a, it's what we call it. How do you say checkmate in Russian? You say checkmate, Amerikansky. Okay, it's over. It's over. Now, people are saying, oh, well, Syrian Assad falls. Who cares? If, if Assad falls, he's an eye doctor. There's tens of thousands of his relatives and friends right back to his father's regime that cannot be taken out. And they know that if they lose, they'll die. So they're going to fight to the death. So I when I, what people need to understand is that if Syria falls, you're going to see Syrian and Iranian Russian-made bioweapons released upon the whole planet. You'll see not tens of thousands. Not even tens of millions. I'm talking about hundreds of millions of people worldwide die in extreme nasty bioweapon plagues. And one of the nastiest weapons the Russian developed was, believe it or not, what's called a zombie weapon. And I'm going to explain this today because I was told this by my classified contacts. They were experimenting back in as early as the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Uh, and both the Americans and the Russians were doing this on taking rabies and making it into a super weapon. So what it would do is it wouldn't kill you right away. It would literally eat your cortex. And what happens when it eats your cortex is you turn into a zombie. You no longer have a cortex, but you're still alive. And you become a bloodthirsty animal. And believe it or not, they do have this weapon. This is not imaginary. Now, that's only one of many horrifying weapons. I mean, I know about the T-Virus project where it paralyzes you so you suffocate and that's how you die. I know about all kinds of very nasty weapons. But all of these are in the hands of the Syrians and Iranians. If Syria falls, Iranians are going to be chucking missiles. And by the way, a lot of those missiles are not going to be Iranian. They're going to be Pakistani. Okay? And no, it's not going to happen. What I'm expecting is the outbreak of a false peace. The Russians and Chinese cannot tolerate it. You will, before you'll see Syria fall, you'll see Chinese troops fighting NATO and American troops in Syria. Well, I'm going to me, predict let me, that. Let me interject one thing that you said, which is uh, with 2012, since today is... December 21st, 2012. Right. As you know, one of the things that I felt was going to happen because of the 2012 thing is we are going to hear various false declarations of peace, uh, what, starting with the New Age movement <laughs> uh, right. within the next day or so. so. Oh, they're going to declare that, that we're in a new world. Where all of a sudden, we're in a higher realm, and we've received the ascension, which is crap. There's no ascension, as, and you know this is the whole purpose of the, or Christmas, Christmas, is the Prince of Peace has to come, or there will never be peace on earth. Mankind, no matter how advanced this technology can create wormholes and leap across the galaxy, will never have peace without the God in the flesh, Yeshua HaMashiach, which means Jesus Christ, which means the Father incarnated as flesh, returns and brings peace to earth. It will never happen. Never. It doesn't matter if it's a thousand or a million years from now. There will never be peace on earth, and mankind is in a terminal state. We have a, a disease. It's called terminal state of sin. Our nation and our world are dying of sin. America is not going to fall because it's lost its military. It's not going to fall because even the loss of its economy. It's going to fall from corruption and evil. I mean, we have a president that believes in infanticide, that believes that he can cry over these kids uh, in Newton, Connecticut. At the same time, he believes in a policy where one person who's, out, quote, al-Qaeda suspiciously, he doesn't mind taking out a freaking entire block, including children and women, of apartment buildings just to get one so-called al-Qaeda guy. It's just considered collateral damage. And when we hear, you know, people like Albright say, oh, well, half a million kids died after the first Gulf War. Well, that's considered, you know, a reasonable price to be paid that half a million children died. And you it's probably that, more like George, two and a half million. George Bush Jr., when he had dinner with Cheney at one time in a, in a luncheon when they were doing the mass kill over there of civilians in Iraq, they even boasted about it and said, how many did Hitler get? And they started laughing and heckling because they don't laugh, they heckle. Uh, they're demons, and these well, that, 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 that's because they, they, these are people of clay and iron. And I, I, the reason why God told me to, to call the book clay and iron is because we're av with these avatar beings that rule our politicians and rule our world and our boardrooms of 
our corporations are human flesh. The flesh, the clay or human flesh stretched over the, the satanic iron bodies of demonic Transdimensional entities of succubi, incubi, and other high level demonic evil beings. And now let me pass this code on to the people. Go to alexanderbachman.com. You'll see a code there. It's the Magog code that I deciphered and I downloaded. Uh, supernaturally, just go and download it and you analyze it later. But let me just get this in. Jim Carrey today was put into power by uh, Hillary Clinton, okay, by orders of her, obviously. She appointed him. Jim Carrey is Skull and Bones. So you have a Skull and Bones uh, secretary. Of John, State I mean John right Kerry. Now. John Kerry. John Kerry. Yeah, John Kerry. You have him as a Skull and Bones member. And this guy went through the most perverse rituals, same as the Bushes, same as all of them, uh, over there at the Skull and Bones uh, 322, uh, the tomb, they call it, at Yale University. Right. And by the way, I've got a new term for him. I call him Frank and Carrie because you look at the guy and said, if he had a few little, you know, that makeup thing with a little art with the stitches, he could be a dead lit ringer for Frankenstein. But look at the date. On 11-11-11, the, the Secretary of, uh, of Internal Government in Mexico died mysteriously in a helicopter crash, right? In Baja California, right. John Blake. Ceremonial. Martin. Ceremonial date, by the way. Uh-huh. Ceremonial date. It was exactly one year, 11 months. And uh, one month, one month, and eleven days before uh, the year of today. So it's all a ritual. You see, they're putting people in power based on alignments and rituals in the sky. That's what they're right. doing. And right, right. In other words, everything is ley lines. Everything is numerology. Everything is Kabbalah. Everything is basically uh, astrological uh, alignments and angles. And this basically is their quote. Their religion is to use these to say, yes, we are the prescient gods of this world. And they're trying to say, see, we perform these events, we perform these things on specific dates and times. So the appointment of John Kerry, I call Frank and Kerry, uh, is a perfect example of where we're going. The same guy who would literally talk about his sexual mis- uh, uh, how can I say it, uh, uh, imaginings in a tomb, masturbating while saying these satanic prayers in the, quote, crypt, which is part of Skull and Bones, the same as George Bush Jr., this yeah, is the kind little, of yeah this is the kind of monster we want yeah this is the kind of monster that we want to have as our as our secretary of state let me tell you Hillary Clinton has when i met her personally had the largest demon i've ever seen in her and that's why of course she's too sick to do talk about benghazi she's got benghaziitis <laughs> well remember how she laughed after livia she heckled Oh, yeah. She said after she knew that the steel rod was shoved up after they, they literally uh, raped uh, uh, Gaddafi, she, she was like, ha, 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 She had a psychic orgasm because she has had experience of too many sex magic rituals and human sacrifices in her Rodham family. Uh, yeah, your comments. Dopamine, yeah. She had a massive dopamine surge when she went, oh man, that was good. That was better than a hit of cocaine. Better than three lines. Uh, Dr. Bob, your comment over this because we're going to continue these shows in the next number of months well, my where do you think all this is going well where, where it's all going is eventually the united states is going to get uh keep be, turning further and further from god and you know the point of my book is as you know was to tell people look the world is not going to end today and when it doesn't end don't believe those who are going to go out there and say false you know promise false peace which is not going to happen and don't believe those who are going to discount all prophecy right so just as what my my comment which is uh, similar to uh, two that you guys made a few moments ago which is people should turn back to the bible and turn back to god if they their yeah, first prepper supply god, should and, be god and so i'd like to do one more plug for the free book because this is the last time i'm going to promote this book on your show because you no know, even though most of my book 90 percent of my book has nothing to do with 2012 it's what happens after 2012 ah, it's so after you yeah. right yeah. So if your listeners have a pen that they grab uh, write down 1-800-675-2012 they get a free book they're going to get, going to get a machine so if it's busy just call again no one's going to sell you anything all we're asking is your name and address you do not get on a mailing list so all you got to do is dial 800-675-2012, and it's totally free. And they can see how uh, Satan has certain prophecies uh, out yeah, exactly. there and how it's going to deceive uh, how many people uh, are going to rely on those because exactly. of the Bible. want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. By the way, the most important thing is sharpen your intellect, stay in prayer, and realize prophecy has been sent as a comforter to us at this time of the end. And today isn't the end of the world, but it is coming. A judgment of fire and a nation led by a monster like Obama and his minions. 